What is up everyone and welcome to a video that I've wanted to do for such a long time now. Here we have my turntable and this is something that you haven't seen in a video in a very very long time and that's because I haven't actually had it set up properly. As you guys know I had two of these Gemini XL500 Mark II turntables. They're pretty much budget direct drive DJ decks but they are really really good quality for what they are. Now they're not that great for DJing at all. Uh, one thing that makes them um, pretty much no good is the really loud stopping mechanism. So you can hear the brake makes a very very loud noise and also they're a little bit um, they're a little bit jumpy and there's no height adjustment on the tone arm. But for listening to records, I've found that this turntable is really nice. Now, of course, it's not automatic or anything and it is a DJ deck, so you've got all this, you know, pitch change stuff um, sitting on the side, taking up space. But for what it is, it is really nice. It's a direct drive turntable, like I said, and um, I am happy with it and I don't see the need to change it. I did try and buy another turntable. I bought a lower end Technics belt drive automatic turntable. That was more of a hi-fi turntable rather than a DJ deck and it was nowhere near as good as this one plus I got some damage to that one in the post. Um, so I'm back to using this one but one thing that I needed was a couple of new things to get me set up. But before I get into that I'm just going to talk a tiny tiny little bit about records and uh, why I'm choosing now to sort myself out with my turntable. I don't know if you guys uh, know or remember but it is I think four or five days um, I'm recording this on Tuesday, so Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So five days until the due date of my little boy. And he's going to be here, he's going to pop out and be with us. And some of the earliest, most magical memories I have are memories of my dad playing me records. Um, Led Zeppelin, The Doors, all sorts of records. And they are probably... Um, not just my earliest music memories, but my earliest memories overall, which is so, you know, it's just, I, I appreciate those memories so much, and I think it set me on the right path of music from day one. So I want to have my turntable fully functional and properly set up so that whenever I feel like sitting down with my little boy, having a chill out, um, I can slap a record on and we can enjoy it together. Now, I'm not saying that he's going to love records and there is no um, there is no way that I'm ever going to force any child of mine to be interested in the interests that I'm interested in. I think that is very uh, closed-minded and whatever the word is. Um, but if he can get some appreciation from records and if he does grow up around good music from a good source, then that will really make me happy because no matter what he ends up doing, um, and what music he ends up liking, I, I think he'll still have an appreciation for this stuff, which would be absolutely magical for me. Um, I would love to try and give him the same experience that I had, and you know, it, I'm so I'm so grateful for those memories. So that's why I'm choosing to do this now, so that when he pops out, if I want to slap on a record, I can. So f to allow me to play records. I needed to buy a couple of things, um, splash out a little bit. Now, I have treated myself to a new cable, we'll take a look at that in a second. It's just a phono cable, nothing special, but it is a rather nice one. The ones that I had were really crackly and awful, and of course I've got a lot that don't have uh, built-in earth cables, but I wanted built -in, a built-in earth cable for convenience. Um, one of the other things that I've done is, when I was fiddling around with using these as DJ decks, I had slip mats on them, but now I have put a rubber grip mat on this turntable, which is much better for actually listening to records. Um, I'll actually show you the slip mat that I took off. A few of you will remember it. Here it is, it's this no cheese slip mat. Pretty cool, but not something that I'm interested in having on my turntable for listening pleasure. Um, so. Here it is, the Gemini XL500 Mark II, and as you guys can see, I've got the standard Gemini head shell on here. We'll zoom into all of this in a moment, and we'll uh, show you some close-ups. But the main thing that I decided to splash out on and treat myself to 
is a new cartridge and stylus. Here it is. This is the Audio-Technica AT95E. Don't worry, I'll give you a close-up in a second, guys. Um, this is basically meant to be a really, really, really good cartridge for the price. Now, these are around... I can't remember how much I paid for it, maybe around £30, so it's definitely an investment, but it will sound worlds better than the DJ cartridge that's on the end of this head shell. Now, before I go on with the video, I'd like to say a massive thank you to Ashley Cox. I'll link his blog in the video description. Um, he's very, very knowledgeable with turntables and audio stuff in general, and uh, for the sort of consumer hi-fi stuff and the turntables and, and whatnot, I do uh, turn to him for advice because I do appreciate records and I appreciate turntables and I love the sound but I am not that knowledgeable about them so it's nice to turn to someone that knows a fair bit about them. He recommended this cartridge for my budget. This is a simple moving magnet cartridge. No bells, no whistles. Um, it doesn't even look the prettiest. It just basically looks the same as what I've got on there now, but the stylus is green um, instead of, you know, the stylus housing bit, the bit of plastic is green instead of orange, um, but it should make worlds of difference. I believe this cartridge has been available since around 1983, so it kind of suits the era of the records that I like listening to. Um, I basically have a collection that's mostly 70s and 80s, um, classic rock and you know some sort of mainstream 80s pop stuff that I really do like but yeah we'll maybe get into that more in the future. Now a little bit of a disclaimer in this video I will not be properly setting up my turntable. I will do my best with the counterweight and the anti-skate and uh, by properly fitting the cartridge to my head, head shell but I do not have any of these funky tools that all the audio files seem to have like alignment protractors and all these kind of things. I'm basically going to wing it for now and um, I do believe that some people do get a little bit too involved you know if, if it's your main hobby and um, you're crazy about this stuff then fair enough everyone gets really involved with their main hobby but for me it's just all about listening and yeah I want to get a good sound so I may pick up one of those alignment protractors or borrow one off someone in the future just to see if I can hear the difference but I'm going to try setting this up myself and it's not going to be perfect in this video. We're basically going to slap the cartridge on and take a listen. Now that brings me on to another disclaimer. I'm using the camera microphone um, so you guys won't be able to actually probably hear the difference between the two cartridges and I, I'm not going to play that much music at all because I don't want to get this video muted or blocked or whatever um, but I will give it a go. Now this record player is set up decently-ish at the moment um, and it's definitely set up well enough to play a record uh, decently and it sounds pretty damn good. I cannot wait to hear what it sounds like after the cartridge upgrade though. Just to give you guys a demo of the existing setup then, I've got this uh, Tears for Fears record, this nice Everybody Wants to Rule the World 12 inch single, stick it on 45. And let's have a little listen to this. This record is in okay condition. Um, let me turn up my amp a little bit. Now I'm not going to play that much, but this is generally a good sounding record in my opinion, and hopefully it'll kind of come through on the camera speakers. Now I'm not going to play too much of each song at a time so I'll kind of turn it down and talk and then turn it back up to hopefully fool whatever robot detects music in these YouTube videos. But um, if you can try and hear the sound, I know it's difficult through the camera microphone. Basically this is a decent sounding setup but what I tend to find with this uh, cartridge that's already on this turntable is the uh, there's like an there is an even sound to the spectrum. But it's basically a nice mids, fairly smooth, very bright highs, sometimes a little bit too harsh, 
Um, uh, but the lows, the bass is very, very muddy sometimes. Uh, it does depend on the record as well, but the bass is a little boomy and muddy. I wouldn't call it boomy, actually. It's, it's refined enough to be nice to the ear, but it is a little a little muddy, a little sloppy around the edges. So I'm really hoping a new cartridge will sort that out. I'm going to turn it up a little bit more and uh, we'll, we'll take another tiny listen to the track. I really hope the copyright gods don't strike me down. So guys, as you know, my channel has already had a little bit of a strike on it this year, so I really, really don't want to jeopardise things. Um, so we're going to stop it there. Hopefully that demo is enough. I guess you guys could always rewind and watch the video again, or rather listen to the video again. Um, so that's a little bit of Tears for Fears right there. I'm going to whip that off, um, and we are now going to turn the turntable off, and we're going to draw our attention to the head shell area and change the cartridge. I've never changed a cartridge before. There is lots of very small little things on there, so um, we'll see how we go. Even though using a DJ deck for playback is sort of really less than ideal in most scenarios, one good thing about even the cheaper DJ decks is you pretty much can guarantee 99% of the time that it's gonna have a standard head shell mount, which is really handy. A lot of the cheaper hi-fi turn turntables, in fact loads of them, don't have the standard mount, so I could put any head shell I wanted on here really, which is always comforting, but I will be reusing this Gemini head shell because I don't see the point in, in changing it. So as you can see, the tone arm has gone pretty much do lally over there because the weight is now obviously way different, um, that's just kind of moving around, but here is the head shell itself, and if I rotate I will get a better angle of this soon, we'll go over to my desk. Um, that is the cartridge underneath, and we will be changing that entire piece there. So here we are guys on the desk, and we are going to attempt to change this cartridge. So here we have my head shell. As you can see, um, pretty decent looking head shell, um, I've got no major complaints about it, and I guess it doesn't really contribute to the sound in any way, so I wasn't going to spend extra money changing it. It looks absolutely fine, and it's got the little handle bit on the side there, so that's all good. But of course, I wanted to change the cartridge. Now, they look very, very similar. It would be pretty funny if this was uh, already an Audio-Technica cartridge on there, but I can already tell that it isn't. <laughs> in fact, it really isn't, and considering that this AT95E is meant to be a legendary sound, this is certainly not a legendary sound. So hopefully I will get legendary sound after making the swap. We've got it. There we go. They don't make it easy, do they, guys? So, first off, we have the cartridge itself. And it's got the nice guard over the stylus that I, obviously I'll keep on there while I'm attaching this to the head shell. Uber tiny. Working with small stuff here. But that's okay. We can deal with that. Here we have the instructions. I thought this was a cloth, but it's instructions, so that's good. This will tell us where, what colour wires go where, which we will of course need to know. Here we have it, all the instructions. Definitely needed in this instance. And then, all, that's, all that remains is the foam. I'll put my old cartridge in here for safekeeping. All that remains is the foam at the bottom and all of these screws. Not sure if I need to use these screws or use the existing screws. That is something that I do not know, just like most of the stuff that I do not know about this. But um, I do know that I need to get some pliers so that I can pull those wires out. Now I do not have another head shell, this is the only head shell that I have, so if I break something, then that's my fault. So I've, I'm going to be really careful pulling these wires out. Okay, one. Yes, yeah, so thin and delicate. There is all four wires pulled out. I found it easier to do it off camera, like the majority of uh, the stuff will probably be. Now. 
I know the focus and stuff is a little bit sketchy, guys, but we're only doing what we can on a limited base of resources here. And wow, that is talked to hell and back. I doubt that's meant to be that tight. We're going to unscrew both of these screws. Um, like I said, I'm not sure if we reuse these screws or whether we use different screws. I have no... Whoa, that is really, really tight on there. That is definitely, definitely on there without a doubt. Um, so we'll just keep loosening these. Ah, and yes, there is little nuts on the other side. I forgot about those. So that is one thing to keep in mind. Okay. And the other one. And after we do this, this existing cartridge should come off. New experiences all the time. Oh, and as well, guys, another quick thing I thought I'd mention is I thought it was an ideal day to do uh, this video because I've had to have my server powered down for a little while um, because I've had people staying in my room so the uh, it's much less noisy in here so we can actually hear the records properly there's less background noise all you can now hear is the various workings inside my camera so here we have the existing cartridge and if I pull the Audio-Technica cartridge into the frame, uh, let's try and get them oriented the same same way. You can see the Audio-Technica is a little bit bigger, similar in design. They've got the same basic design, um, but all a little bit different. Again, Audio-Technica is bigger. The stylus itself is bigger. Um, so, yeah, looking forward to doing the upgrade to see the difference. Now, I'm going to knock the camera off to do this next part, guys, because even taking that off was difficult enough filming it through the camera and watching it on the camera screen. I'm going to attach this new cartridge um, basically off camera. There's a lot of play in that and I'm not going to know how to align it. I'll try my best. As I say, limited resources. Well, everyone, that was one heck of a lot easier than I expected. Good instructions, pretty simple. I reused the existing screws with my head shell. Um, I've mounted it in pretty much the same place as the old cartridge was, I believe, but I will have to align this. This is quite a lot of um, different positions you can achieve, so uh, I will properly align it, and of course I'll need some, I'll need some other things for that. But um, let's slip the stylus back on. If I do that like that, that is now clipped into place. Got all the uh, little wires connected, that was a lot easier. There we have it, there is my new head shell with the Audio Technica AT95E cartridge and stylus, which is pretty cool. Now I'm going to screw it onto the turntable and we're going to give it a whirl. But before then I think I'll just um, quickly show you my new cable, because I did mention it. So here is the back of my amplifier. As you guys can see, I've got this nice thick blue cable. I'll show you the cable itself in a minute. But I've got the ground connection going there and these two nice big chunky left and right phono connections. It's not any crazy uh, awesome brand or anything like that. Um, it's just a nice, nice cable. And um, yeah, I think it's a lot better than my old crackly mess of a cable. It's fairly long, which is handy. And it's also thick and good quality. Um, so... Yeah, that's the cable. Not too much to say about the cable. It was quite expensive for a cable, but um, yeah, it should not give me any problems and it should last a very long time. So everyone, time to grab our tone arm and screw on the head shell, like so. I've got the counterweight set to two grams because I believe that's what it says in the instructions. Let's have a look, have a look, have a look. Where do we have it? Yes, two grams. So that is good. Um, Anti-skate is set to zero at this particular moment in time. Um, I tell you what, let's just give it a whirl. Why the heck not? I know I should be adjusting and if Ashley is watching this all the way through, he will be mad at me not for doing my proper turntable adjustments, but I'm sure he'll understand that just for now, I want to give it a whirl just to see what it sounds like. We'll use the same record so that it's fair. Power on, 45, go. Ah, guys, so excited to hear the difference. Let me make sure my amplifier is turned up. 
Okay, let's give it a go. Now it takes a little while to break cartridges in. I'm not too sure how long it takes, but breaking them in is a thing. Um, so we may not notice uh, an awesome increase in sound quality to begin with, but we will sure as heck give it a go. Okay, so turning the amp down for a second, we do have a little issue, and that is I'm getting very low signal through the left side. So let's just double check the wiring. Well guys, there's something weird going on with my amp or that phono cable. It's really odd. It's thankfully nothing to do with the cartridge, as far as I know, um, because every time one of the channels goes down, if I just unplug it and then plug it back in at the amp end, it works fine. So my amp could be getting a bit dodgy. I've never used the phono input on this amp before, so that could well be the case. I'll have to experiment further with uh, uh, another amp later on because I've got plenty of, uh, of other amps. But I am so pleased with the sound. Um, bear with me if one of the channels goes down, I'll have to fiddle with the cables. Could be a dodgy cable, it is a new cable. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But anyway, as far as the sound, and it's not even broken in yet, as far as the sound of this cartridge goes, it sounds amazing. Take a listen to this. Hang on guys, it's happened again. Here we go. You guys can hear as a direct comparison that sounds so much better um, not noticing a lot in the low end at the moment it sounds good um, but that'll probably warm up over time but one thing I will say is the highs are much much less brittle which I really like so um, really looking forward to listening to it more and hearing it break in let's just have a little change of record because i'm sure everyone's bored of that one we'll try a little bit of simple minds one of my favorite bands um and they were in cardiff this year and i did not go and see them and that will be one of my life regrets so whatever what can you do eh, guys so there's that this one's 33 so this will give you an idea of a 33 as well okay Let's give this a go. I may need to fiddle with the cables at the amp end. Just lost one channel again, there's definitely something wrong. It could be my speaker because I know my speaker was knocked over, um, unfortunately, a couple of days ago. But I'm gonna have to investigate this, guys, after the video. I'm not gonna show any more music now, guys, because I'm so scared of this video getting muted or blocked, or worse, my channel getting a strike. Um, the counterweight feels really good at two grams, um, but of course, I'll have to keep an eye on that. Uh, Anti-skate is set to zero, and the turntable is not properly set up, so that is something that I am going to address. I'll probably not make another video about it, but what I will make a video about is my general hi-fi setup once I get everything properly set up and repositioned. I'm going over 
um, quite a couple of different transitions in my room and I will have space to set this stuff up properly. So, well everyone, I was just about to end the video there. As you can see, this chunk here is my old intro. That, uh, my old outro, sorry, and that is just where you got up to. But I'm gonna delete this part because I just said thank you for watching, please like if you like the video and all that stuff. But what I thought I'd do is up update you guys on what's happened in the last couple of hours. So before I decided to uh, knuckle down and edit this video, I actually listened to a good couple of albums on my turntable. And I also, while I was doing so, made an Instagram post and did a tweet and Facebook post and that um, to show the new stylus and Ashley contacted me and he said if you want to do a rough alignment um, it's really easy because you have a DJ turntable basically just measure um, the distance between the stylus tip and the um, rubber gasket thingy back here and it should be 52 millimeters so I measured it set it to 52 millimeters and now I am very very happy I am aligned and I have not been having any issues with my turntable whatsoever. Now you guys might be curious about the left and right channel thing, what is happening? Well, I discovered that it is the phono button on the front of my amplifier. You've got the mode selection buttons here between tuner, tape, uh, auxiliary, CD, phono, etc. And uh, that button is a little bit uh, dusty, so just a little bit of contact cleaner behind that and that issue will be resolved. There is nothing wrong with my cable, nothing actually wrong with the amplifier, it's just a dirty button. And um, the turntable is running as smooth as ever. Now one thing that I will say is I do want to put my dust cover on it, but I've lost one of the little plastic bits that slots into the back. I'll have to look, it's somewhere upstairs. So I will, I will hunt that down. Um, but that is it for this video. I wanted to do this little extra bit. Ooh, and also, I have now watched back all of the clips um, where I was playing music, and it sounds absolutely horrendous through the camera mic. I'm so sorry, guys. It sounds all boomy and horrible. Um, but hopefully you can get an idea. You can kind of hear the difference between the two cartridges. Maybe I'll do a direct in recording one day to show you the difference. Um, but yeah, I will be covering some of this stuff more in the future, especially when I get a more permanent hi-fi setup where I don't have to trail cables across the floor. That would be really cool. It's surprising how much space a turntable takes up. Um, but anyway, this video is already too long. Huge thank you for watching everyone. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed because my stats are, are heavily affected at the moment because I'm not doing five videos a week like I normally do. So YouTube is like, what the heck IMNC? Why have you dipped in stats so much? You know, I'm like, well, yeah, taking a little break. But please like this video. Um, I'm trying to get as many out as I can. And of course, as always, I will see you in the next one.